to restrict the use of certain apps, particularly when it comes to apps where a large amount of data can be stored and accessed. Lindsay Gorman is a senior fellow for Emerging Technologies at the German Marshall Fund in Washington. Thank you very much for being with us. Um, do you think this will be limited solely to government devices? Because there must be companies looking at this and wondering whether their commercial data is at risk. Thanks, Christian. Yeah, this is a strong first step by the UK government to limit what the world is starting to recognize as a true espionage threat from the Chinese government through one of its companies, ByteDance, that owns TikTok, which is obviously incredibly popular in the UK and around the world. And so I think if we look at the conversations that's happening in the United States, in Australia, in many democracies across Europe as well, this may not be the end of restrictions when it comes to TikTok. As you mentioned, the threat today that officials are guarding against here is the exfiltration of data, sensitive data held by government officials in the course of their official business and their conduct of, of their government business. But that is not the only data that's at risk. China has a long history of being the world's number one infringer on intellectual property rights and has an active program of cyber espionage to steal trade secrets from businesses. But so I wouldn't yeah. be surprised if we start to see businesses taking a harder look at the devices their employees are using. But I imagine it's not solely about the data. A lot of people get their news and their information from this app. Are there also concerns about the algorithms and where people are being pointed? There are absolutely concerns about the algorithms when it comes to consumers and the average user, the average citizen, not just those in a position of access to sensitive information. We know that these apps, in addition to hoovering up massive amounts of information about individuals and about their political beliefs, about their wants, their likes, their desires, also have an enormous degree of influence on what content is shown and where. And this happens across all social media platforms, not just the social media platforms that are owned by Chinese companies, but is particularly concerning when we know that inside China, there is an active program to censor politically sensitive content um, about Xinjiang, about Taiwan, about democracy, and about their political leaders. And there's a concern that with apps like TikTok and Chinese information communication technology platforms, we could be looking at the export of this surveillance state yeah. because we won't know how content is showed to us. ByteDance is, uh, is located in the United States. I know that Congress has been looking at maybe a solution whereby ByteDance would be sold to an American company. Would that be a possible solution? So a forced sale of TikTok to a company, either an American company or a company that's based in another democracy, would resolve a lot of the national security concerns we're talking about. Because uh, as the officials said, this is a precautionary measure that we're worried that the Chinese Communist Party could use its influence over a company that's based in China to exert that influence and gather that data or steer the algorithm in one direction or another in terms of what it's going to show users. So would would that that link, that influence link no longer exist, then I think we can mitigate some of that threat by saying if there's a company that is based in a democracy, they do not have the same ties to and responsibility and ultimately accountability to the Chinese government that ByteDance does today. So I do think that's a good solution and one that yeah. in the United States lawmakers are looking at. Um, because this, this is a problem that's not going away without action. Lindsay Gorman, thank you very much indeed. Mass